Welcome everyone to the first official episode of season one. So this is when we're going to start with the 13 projects that we all selected last episode and session and start moving through. Uh, we're calling it an incubator, but you know, to be determined what we're actually going to end up calling this thing. But essentially it's a process that we're all going to go on together to get ready to crowd pool for our projects. Crowd pooling being able to raise all the different forms of capital that we need in order to have a successful project, whatever that project is. Um, what I'd love to do today is actually do an overview of what we've put together so far and also get any expectations or desires from the project participants. So I'll have a space for each one of the project representatives to speak into and say, hey, you know, this is what I was expecting to get out of this. This is what I really need to get out of it. Um, and we can see if we can accommodate that as an alliance. So that would be one of the first things we do after I do a really quick overview. Um, so that's my suggestion for how we can run for today. Does anyone have any changes, amendments, or anything they would add to that agenda before we get going? Great. Well, I'm seeing reps from most of the 13 projects. I'm not entirely sure if they're all here. Um, so that will be great to be able to go through them all. Okay, let me share my screen and I'll share a link to this as well in the chat. So let me bring it up. This is our trusty knowledge base. Actually, I can share the actual one. Just give me one moment. Okay, here's the proper link. So we recently added this, the incubator tab under the Alliance overview. And does everyone see my screen right here? Yep. So if you click down on incubator, this is where we're actually going to go over today. All right. So step by step, this is what we can expect from the incubator. So first was start with heart. This is the first step you find over here with step zero. Um, this is what some of the organizations here are really focused on doing is helping projects envision what they could actually build and helping them coalesce that vision, tell that vision and speak to it. So this is what we were sharing in the last of last episode is creating a video. So a five minute video from each one of the projects talking about their vision and then being able to compile this all together. So this is the very first thing um, that we're gonna be doing as an alliance. All right, is there any questions with that step? We kind of went over it pretty much in detail last time, but I'll pause here in case there's any other questions on this before we keep going. Um, first question in the chat is timeline. Yes. So this is how I've conceived of it so far. Again, all of this is open for reinterpretation as we keep going through it. Um, but I kind of see a three-step pattern where the first session, which is what we're doing literally right now, is we explain the next step. As we go over it in detail, we share some resources for it, we support in whatever way we can in the time that we have allotted. And then during that week, using Discord to continue collaborating, teams work on that step. So for example, the Start With Heart one, you would be working on your video, which is what I'm assuming you all did last week and the weeks before anyway. The session after that is then when all the projects come together and they get to showcase what they've been working on. So maybe they've already finished that step or they're in the middle of it, they have some thoughts on it, whatever it is, they get space to be able to share. So each second session will be all 13 projects going through and sharing it with the remainder of that session being a discussion. Potentially from hearing other projects share, you might get inspired. You might see other things that you wish you would have done better, et cetera. So that's where one more week where we go through and we work on that step, we come back together for the third session where we all share one more time. And this is gonna be that session that we kind of immortalize into the, the season where we go through each one of the steps to inspire other projects. So when projects are coming up and they wanna come up with a vision, maybe they're having a hard time knowing that vision, great, they watch that episode where all 13 projects shared theirs. Um, so that's kind of how I see it as a timeline. So that would be three weeks for each step, depending on how many steps we do. Um, depends on how far we're gonna go into this. So there are six steps currently. So this looks like maybe four and a half, five months 
Um, this might be a six month process, but we don't know. This is the first season. We're going through this together. Really, we're gonna keep going through it until we're done and we've all launched our projects. Um, actually, I lied. Um, what I put in here is once nine projects have finalized their model on each step, then we move forward. So we don't wait until everyone to be finished, but once we have a super majority that are like, yep, we finished with this step, then we kind of move on to the next one. So we do have the process to keep repeating that third step to keep coming back and showcasing if the projects are all finding it really helpful, or at least if more than nine are. Um, cool, so that's a proposed model that I'm putting together right now. Any thoughts, questions, comments, adjustments, anything on that um, kind of three-step process here? Do we like it? We think this is a helpful model to run with. Some thumbs up. Great. <laughs> okay. Um, let's start using the emojis more so I have a little bit of feedback of what you guys are all thinking. Um, specifically for the video, last week we said two weeks for it. So we would have one more week. Um, and that's up to you guys. So what I would love to do is next week is we'll be on step two for that, where we can start showcasing where everyone's at with their videos. Um, this is where you can actually share it. You can ask any questions or whatever. And then we'd actually put it together so we wouldn't do that third step for the video creation because we'll just compile those videos and then everyone can watch them on their own time. Okay, so that would be the step one, start with heart. Step two is then we actually go through and start creating. So reverse engineering backwards from that vision we just created, what organization and economic model might be able to help us create that vision? So this is when we start getting into some of the DAO tools. So we have some of the, the tools that have come to this alliance, at least in a little bit, um, represented here. So I don't know if there's going to be representatives for each of these DAO tools, but hopefully there is. And then projects can choose which DAO tooling they would like to use. I will be supporting Haifa and helping with those tools so you can reach out to me. Um, so then the sessions after the, the start with heart is we'll go through and actually start designing the DAOs for each one of the organizations following that same process. First, we'll show off how the different DAO tools work. You can go throughout the week and use them, of course. Um, we'll start designing it, building it out, and then come back, share each other's models, et cetera. Um, so that would be the second major step. So once we've designed our organizations and we know what they look like, this is when we're gonna go through and create the legal and land ownership structures. So a lot of the projects have already been working on this in great detail. It's gonna take some time. So I highly recommend you're already looking into this anyway. But again, first session, we're gonna go through and explain some of the models that are currently you know, out there, what people are using. And then of course we go and share what models we're using and learn from each other. Um, the one after that, so now we have our organization structure set up. We have our legal entity set up. We're gonna design our crowd pooling event. So what does it mean to actually crowdfund? It's similar to Kickstarter and what it requires to actually set one up, but you're gonna have some different thresholds. So you know, what's the minimum amount your project needs to succeed? What's the max maximum you wanna take in? Do you have any stretch goals? You know, what forms of capital are you looking to take in, et cetera. So the first session is we're gonna go through and talk about how to design the crowd pooling campaign. And then of course, go back and share. These are what we're thinking for our campaigns, et cetera. Um, once we have finished and everyone feels like they, yep, they're confident they have their crowd pooling ready, this is when we're actually going to run it. So we're going to run the crowd pooling. We're going to pick which platform we want to run it on. So I'm talking to a couple. I know a couple other people are too. Um, and we're going to try to find the one that's going to get us the most traction and visibility in whatever platform that's you know right for us. Um, so we don't know which platform we're actually going to run this on yet. Um, then once we've actually run the crowd pooling event, that's when we move on to the next stage, which is that Regen Civics Festival. So we've just pooled all the resources we need. Now we're gonna be on the ground actually building the projects wherever they're at. And there's a bunch of alliances within um, Regen Civics right now that will be able to help people run their projects should they want to run their festivals at their project. Um, then after that, we are going to continue working together as the Alliance progresses. So this is when the incubator kind of ends, is the festivals is the, the culmination of the season. This is when we're together, we're celebrating, we've done it. But then going forward is this constant step six, where we're going to keep learning from each other. So ideally, you know, the 13 projects kind of stay in a cohort and we can continue to learn from each other as we move through and actually run our projects and do what we are here to actually do, right? Um, so I'll pause there. So that's kind of what I have and things that I'm capable of helping with. 
but I've left this open because there's a lot of different alliance organizations that have showed up that might want to add a different step here, that might want to offer a different session that they feel like would be helpful for projects. Um, and what I'd also like to open up right now is for any of the projects to say this is a step that we feel would be really helpful or necessary for us in order to get to this point. Um, so I'll pause here. So loose frame. Um, and right now we can actually have each one of the 13 projects share. So if you're a representative for that, feel free to put your hand up. You can speak to this, you know, current frame, how it looks, and you can also speak into anything you feel like is missing that we can add to this flow for this season. Um, great. So I see Sam, you have your hand up. Yeah. Hey, um, this looks good. Uh, I think one thing that uh, we used to do in um, this thing called the uh, Eco Living Federation back a long time ago before rebuild existed was to basically just share the models of the spaces, like how, how does it work, what, how does the governance work, what is a financial model, and so on and so on. Um, so I don't know if that would be something useful to just kind of get uh, some, yeah, some extra eyes on um, if some projects are maybe starting to build them and so on and kind of get some track on, yeah, what is, uh, what kind of government structures are we setting up, what kind of human systems, uh, what is the general financial model and so on. So more of the organization model, less the DAO structure, but now more on the business financial sustainability side. Um, yeah. Switch to editor mode. I love that. Let me add that step. Um, right. Um, let me just take a moment to do this. Where do you feel like that would best fit in, Sam? Is that kind of right before the crowd pooling event? So after we've created the legal structures, we do the same thing for the you know, financial and sustainability. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Yeah. Then I can fill that out more after. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a great idea to actually talk about that and talk about um, some of the unique ideas that people have for financial sustainability too. So that's another way that we're gonna continue weaving in is, yep, awesome, you guys all get that. Um, Walter, you have your hand up. Yeah, it's a question about who who should be on these calls. Like, um, I'm probably the the representative. I mean, we'll we'll have a group, you know, for Finca Sagrada that works on all these um, questions, put putting it all together. And I'm hoping, uh, you know, Jesse and and Si Young will be doing. Um, a lot of the work on this and uh, you know we have a very um, group like Lauren's very good at videos so how wh what's the general idea about how many people should be on a call or how, how do we handle that yeah uh, great question so Here's how I'm handling, you know, coordination and working together with these emergences is we handle attention when one arises. So right now I'm personally choosing to say leave these calls open, but that we bias participation towards the 13 projects. Um, and if everyone is feeling like they're, you know, not able to get their time in, then we'll just have the 13 projects be able to speak. But if there's a lot of open space, then we can allow other participants to. Uh, I did feel like it probably adds value to have whoever else feels really called to join these sessions actually be able to continue to show up and be able to weave their wisdom and information into this um, as long as it stays you know contained so my role as a facilitator is to make sure that you know the projects are getting a lot of value out of it that people are happy and that we're thriving here so i'm saying if it becomes a tension that we need to resolve great let's resolve it but let's not try to get caught up trying to over engineer what this needs to look like because that could you know take a lot of time and prevent us from actually getting the work done that we're trying to get done. Um, Cause there's a million different holes that we can go down there. Uh, so that's my current thoughts on it is try not to over-engineer it. Let anyone attend who wants to attend, but bias participation and who are presenting only to the 13 projects. So if other project representatives are showing up, they don't have a space to share their model because we're only going to be speaking to the 13 that were chosen this season. Um, 
does that work for everyone? And yeah. if you have any that other suggestions good. for this, please, mm -hmm. you know, say, you know, raise your hand and speak to them, or you can message me directly and we could talk about how we want these spaces to be facilitated. Does that help, Walter? Yeah, that's great. Um, Anders. Hey. Uh, so a few questions that come up for me. Um, one is, is there any funding available to support the projects through these various steps before the crowd pooling happens? Um, funding what capacity to pay for representatives to be able to show up here or what do you mean? Um, I don't know. I'm just um, not in, not in uh, necessary need, but always in acceptance of, you know, like support for um, more media creation, support for, um, I don't know, various different things that might be helpful to help us like get to where we need to get. Like, for example, I'm an event producer. I've been producing many, many events, and I know how much time and effort and cost goes into producing an event. So maybe there, you know, I don't know if there's any funding available for that. You know, some of these things that we want to get into, uh, I'm going to, I'm in the process, you know, we're all, many of us are in the process of putting our land into various trusts and all this stuff. And, and as, as great and awesome as all the support is here, it might be nice to have other legal support. I don't know if like everybody has like budget for that or if there's, you know, anything. So um, yeah, so one, I was just curious, you know, I just wanted to put that out there and was curious about that. Sure. Um, as far as fiat funding for the Alliance right now, none. Um, first season, we're coming together. All of this, people are working on a token basis. Um, so that is the point of the DAO where people are earning you know, tokens to compensate their efforts here. So if people are willing to work for tokens to support your project, awesome. That's what we're here to try to help set up. Um, in future and subsequent seasons, we want there to be funding. First, we're gonna run one season, showcase what we're doing. And then that's when we're gonna start approaching some of the investors and institutions that want to fund this type of work to start raising capital as a whole alliance. Um, however, we, we have to have something to show them. So we're running the first season. So that's where we're at right now. Cool. Um, so far, as far as this season goes, no, there's no, you know, US dollar or fiat funding available. However, our second step is creating those DAOs and organizations. So you can start issuing tokens for people who are contributing to your project. So if there is legal help you need, great. Maybe there's some lawyers here, people who want to offer that support. Um, or when we actually go through the legal session, you're just getting the ideas already. And that's happening through the work that we're doing. And a lot of people have spent a lot of time looking at the legal structures. So I think you can, you know, glean a lot of wisdom there without even having to hire a lawyer, potentially. Cool. Um, so yeah, that's currently where we stand. And the same thing with the Regen Civics Alliance itself, is it's going to have its own DAO where it's issuing Regen Civics tokens for people who are contributing to making this alliance a success. Cool. Uh, and the next question is, um, I'm curious if we should, as a group, um, explore potentially crowd pooling our own funds, if we have any fiat funds to potentially explore like hiring an agency to support our crowdfunding efforts, because I've you know been studying crowdfunding for a long time and I've done a few of them myself and like the amount of success that's gathered from people and agencies that are really, really um, adept at that raise a ton more money. So, or, and maybe that's not paying them in money, but maybe that's like finding an agency that would be willing to doing this for like tokens or something like that, because I know I'm extremely busy and running a successful crowdfunding campaign. It's like a full-time job. And I don't want to overload anyone in any type of, you know, inequitable way during this whole thing. So I think this is just like an opening of a conversation as we get closer to that, to kind of identify a team to really be solid and support us in, in, in running the most successful crowdfunding campaign possible. Yeah, uh, I'm glad you mentioned that. That was actually one of the reasons why this alliance even formed to begin with is that exact question. Does it make sense for each one of our projects to go through and invest full time into raising capital for ourselves, telling the same story ourselves, creating our own website for it's like there was a lot of redundancy happening. So definitely when we reach the step where we talk about crowdfunding, I say we re-raise re that question where we talk about hiring an agency together and then looking at that cost collectively. Um, and then it would be one thirteenth the cost that it would normally be, and we can have more of the impact. 
And then we can all put in one thirteenth the time, you know, to make the campaign a success on our own side, where we're sharing it around where we need to. Um, so that was the main idea is that there would be one landing page that shows all 13 of the projects that people could then crowdfund into. So you're telling the story one time and then all of the traction is coming to that one center place, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so I think I love that idea. And I think we can do that for each one of the steps as we approach them. We could talk about if projects do wanna to come together and pool resources um, to be able to take on each one of the projects and then we can do it more effectively and efficiently with our limited capital. So I love that. Um, and, and this and, is, and, uh, oh, sorry, right, go on. I'm going to change subjects, but if you want to keep talking on that one well, a little bit. Then yes, the last one to expand on it, this is one of the really powerful reasons for having the DAO tools and to be able to issue tokens for different forms of compensation. So right now on the meta side, people are kind of aware of this maybe as we seem like we're heading towards a recession. And all a recession often means is that there's just not enough money to go around. It's not like people have you know, stopped wanting to do things anymore. There's just not money in order to make those transactions happen. So if we get rid of that money as a medium requirement, meaning people can contribute to projects directly and be compensated for that through token issuances, um, then we can actually kind of continue to collaborate and co-create regardless of the, the meta circumstances, whether or not we're in a recession or depression or whatever that means. Um, so I think that's also a really key thing with setting up our DAOs to be able to start issuing tokens for people who are, anyway, we'll get into that more mm -hmm. when we touch on step two. So uh, you had well, one more question. Well, yeah, one more thing. Um, just thinking about uh, content creation for our campaign, uh, I think that a an idea to propose would be to actually stagger our events like weekend after weekend after weekend and making like the campaign two or three months long or whatever it is so that every single weekend when there is an event happening at whatever scale that is that can be in support of the crowdfunding things and then that can then you know the event could potentially be virtual could potentially be you know all kinds of things but so that we're stacking functions and utilizing all of our efforts in creating our events to support the campaign that it is that we're you know going towards Ooh, yeah really good question so are you seeing that we're running the region civics festivals whatever we're calling them we're doing the actual projects whilst we're still raising funds and doing the crowd pooling i think it would be smart um, and once again, it's just like an idea to go out there because I'm always looking at like, I don't want to duplicate efforts and I want to make sure all of my efforts is going to be in support. So there's so many things that are going to be help that are going to be happening at our events that could be really helpful for the crowdfunding process. So, and, and what, what I'm, what I'm concerned about is also that like, you know, the, 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 the people that might want to come to my event might want to come to somebody else's event because we're, we're targeting the same people. And those people, we want them to know about all the things that we're doing. So my concern would be like to not double up our events or triple up or quadruple up our events during the same time, because that would limit the amount of interested participants to potentially tour the different events that could potentially be happening. I love that. Um, so part of this alliance is a really, it's a duocracy. So my invitation for you is to create a document that says, you know, calendar for events, and then we can actually start filling them out. So if people love this idea, we're making sure that we're staggering them. So some projects might need to do the crowd pooling and have that finished first in order to have the finances and resources or capital, whatever, in order to actually do a project. But if you don't need that, then you can put your project to happen right when you're done with your crowd pooling campaign and you have it set up before it actually finishes. Um, if that makes sense. So if you are a project who needs your crowd pooling campaign to finish before you actually run your festival, then you can post that later. But if you're not, then we can start scheduling them now and maybe Anders might create a document to start scheduling that out so we stagger them. Uh, I love that idea. Um, what, do you, what do we all think of that? Making sure that we stagger events, that we can run them. Yep, some thumbs up. That we run them whilst the crowd pooling campaign is going on rather than needing it to finish before. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is all right. Cool. If anyone has any thoughts against that or any reason why that might not be a fantastic idea, just feel free to share up and speak up now.
Yeah, great. No, I, I love that upgrade. Um, thanks, Anders. And if we want, we can add the project name to our names here too, so that we all know who's representing projects and et cetera. So you can change your Zoom name to add your project if you want. Um, anything else on your mind, Anders? No, I'm complete. Thank you. Yeah, awesome. Um, we'll keep going through the rest of the project. So if you are representing a project here, then feel free to raise your hand and or just unmute yourself and speak into it. I have, I have something to add. Oh, sorry. Sorry for that. So basically, this is not working. No, I can try that way. Um, yeah, too many documents. It's like it's like not collaborative easily. And um, I highly um, suggest for us to have some collaboration tool. It could be Notion. It could be Confluence. It could be any collaboration tool out there. But too many documents flying around and then you need to run behind the um, document owner and then you don't find them and it's like if we can start from the beginning in one collaboration tool and really collaborate together this would be so easy and we can find a lot of more support so yeah i i suggest notion um we have a space already um created for us that we can use and but if you have any other um any other tool Let's use it. I, I published the, the link in the chat. We can use it that way, but yeah, it's just a proposal. I love this proposal. I think it's mandatory. Um, thank you for taking initiative and making that happen. Um, it's exactly what we wanna see. So we have two spaces, the, the knowledge base that's here. Um, if you want to add anything to the knowledge base, you can do it yourself. Um, or you can reach out to me and I can add it. So there's a place to how to contribute to this guide and you can gain permission and you can make suggestions and updates here as well. It's not as easy to use as Notion. So I highly recommend we also have a Notion tool. And Nadim, if you would like, maybe at the start of next session, you can actually give an overview of the tool that you've made and we can make sure that we start you know, coalescing everything into one space and linking everything into there. Um, and maybe Notion is probably better than the, the tool that we've been using here so far. Thank you so much. Um, I will be on a retreat next week, but basically we have um, Michael here right now in the call. He is um, part of the Notion um, co-working group, co-creation group, and we have a support team in Seeds who are willing to support with any administrative efforts. So yeah, I mean, uh, there is a lot of support behind that. I'm, in two weeks, I could show it, but yeah, many just know that tool is pretty easy and straightforward. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. Um, maybe I can connect with you after and get spin up on how the Notion tool works and what you guys are doing with it. Um, any questions, thoughts on the coordination tools that we're using for this alliance moving forward or any suggestions or anything about that? Great, easy. Um, any other projects with questions or thoughts on the incubator and what to expect or anything that you would like to see added in this incubator? Anders. Like we all think, we're doing something pretty freaking revolutionary and pretty, pretty damn amazing. And even though we are collaborating on this level, I think that even as we are kind of creating, starting to create this, um, it would be amazing to have like a really simple, like one page opt-in so that we can all just like gather anybody and everybody that we know that might be like interested in potentially buying into any level of what it is that we're doing. And we don't have to say too much, but maybe as soon as we get some some more of our like five minute videos together and and or just do something really really simple so that we all have a landing page 
to just start sending traffic to so that we can just start gathering thousands and thousands of emails, hopefully, so that when we're ready to do the crowd pool in a few months from now, we've you know gathered some momentum. Uh, I think that's a fantastic idea. We, I didn't share the video very much because it wasn't meant to be shared. Only the one that we're making next was really meant to be widely shared. And it's still got a thousand people who viewed it and a lot of people joining the Discord. So anyway, I think that's a great idea. And we can build that into the Notion itself. So if you are using Notion as a tool, then the Notion landing page could also have an opt-in where we start um, collecting emails and the like for Regen Civics. Um, I think that's a lovely idea. And as a coordinator of Regen Civics, maybe that's something that I, I will take to our coordination team to make that happen. Um, yeah, I love that idea. So I actually added that to our step-by-step. -step. So when you have the shared 2030 video and we do start sharing that, um, all the five minute projects so in a couple of weeks, then we can start doing that. Yeah. Anders, you're, you're awesome. Um, Tina. So I just uh, had an interesting thought. I had a, I was in on a meeting this morning with Akasha and they're putting together something called um, Ethereum World. It's a very, very simple um, social platform. Um, and it, it looks like it could kind of fit the bill for what we're doing. And it's an alliance with Web3, um, very established um, uh, community. So anyway, it's just a suggestion. We might want to look at how to use a, a new sort of social media platform to do some of this uh, interesting, um, these you know the the interconnectedness of how we're how we're coming together and and our outward facing could be a new social media platform. Investigating. That's all I got. Thank you. Uh, I think that's a perfect minor segue for me to express a little bit about the region civics organization. So, um, cause I think it might help answer yours and others questions on this. So let me share my screen one more time. Uh, so you talked about a potential, a potential alliance organization. Um, and there's a lot of them out there. So this is the process that we have for this is one, we might have a, standing quest to be able to have an alliance builder. So what you just did right here is you said, hey, this alliance is great. I've done some work to talk to them. Let me weave them in. You know, we're gonna have a quest for that, that you would earn some regen civics tokens um, for helping facilitate that. So if anyone else here is like, yep, we have some alliance organizations we think would be great for this, your action of weaving them in, could get you some tokens. What does weaving them in actually mean? You come and talk to one of the season coordinator core team members and you say, hey, you know, I have this alliance. I think they would be awesome. This is what session I think they ought to be able to put on. So maybe they actually show up and show how to use the Ethereum world, you know, walk all the projects through it, help them set up their platform or whatever. And if the coordination team is like, yep, this is going to be involved in this season, then both that alliance is going to earn some tokens for that season. And so would you um, for helping build that. Um, so this is kind of the very beginning <laughs> stages of what the region civics organization would look like and how we can all start, you know, being recognized for our contributions to making this happen. Um, real quick on the rest of the proposed structure. Again, all of this is up for evolution. I just want to keep saying that because we're building this as we go. And all of these are designed to keep evolving as we you know, find better ways of doing things. Um, so anyway, here are the, the initial roles of it is the founders. So that's really everyone who's been showing up and contributing up until now. So this will be a ceremony when once we set up Regen Civics, we'll onboard all the first people who want to be, who are like, yep, I've been here. I've been on the calls. I've been contributing X, Y, Z, whatever. And then if you're one of the first members to join Regen Civics when we launch it, which will be in a couple of weeks, um, maybe even two now, then you're just considered a founder and that's the founding role and you're gonna earn some tokens for that. Then there's the Alliance contributor. So alliances are again, organizations that are helping projects. So that an alliance isn't a land-based organization. Like Ethereum world, for example, it's software, it's code, it exists nowhere. So they would be an Alliance contributor. Um, a contributor being one person representing that alliance who's actually showing up and you know add, adding the value. So that's one of the roles. Then there's the project coordinator. You can call these things whatever, and that's most of you or a lot of you. 
you're representing a project, one of the 13 during that season. So that's one of the other roles. And you also are earning tokens um, for contributing and showing up to these calls because showing up to these calls is a contribution. So as an Alliance contributor, as a project coordinator, as a founder, we're all earning value for you know, moving this thing forward. And then there's the season coordination core team. So that's what I've been doing. Um, Sydney's been doing this, Jillian's been doing this, um, Jamaica's done this a little bit. So whoever's actually holding space, facilitating the calls, making sure everything's running smoothly and moving forward. Now this core team is selected before each season starts and the core team is the one who starts the season. So after each season ends, that's the next step we do before we can start a new season is we have to select a new um, coordination team. Maybe it's the same team as last season, maybe it's a new team you know, that's up to all of us as you know, role holders in the organization to be able to select who that team is going to be next season. And then they're the ones that coordinate the team, they help the project selection go take place and then they launch the next season. Um, I'll get into a little bit more about what the rest of this stuff means when we go through the process of creating a DAO for ourselves and for region civics um, during step two, which might actually be the, the rest of this call if we want to. Um, so I'll pause there. If there's any questions, really burning questions right now on the, the region civics DAO structure itself, right now is a great space to you know, ask those and then we'll move on. Looks like Kelly has her hand up. I know that's, uh, I'm, I'm assuming that's a moving on. So if we don't have any other questions, then yes, to Kelly and we'll move on. Well, I have a question actually, <laughs> and then I'll okay. go. Um, what is the formal process by which an Alliance org is voted in and when do we think that'll be happening? Right, so the formal process. So we'll actually go through setting up Regen Civics on one of these calls, showing each one of the projects how to set up their own DAO, should they use the same tool or the general philosophy and thinking about setting one of them up anyway, right? Mm -hmm. um, and what that looks like is then we're, there's currently five people, the people who have been doing the coordination team that are part of the Regen Civics. Let me just show it to you guys right now. I've been working on it a little bit. Um, so here is our very empty, there's no badges, no payouts, no assignments, you know, it's completely empty. But anyway, here's our region civic style. So we'll go through the process of actually setting this up. Currently, as let's look at all the members here. We have five members. One of the Dow team who helped actually set it up. <laughs> and then the four of us. So Sydney, Jillian, Jamaica, and myself. So how it's formally going to work is anyone can come here and There'll be a button here at the top right if you're not a member that says apply to become a member and then you put in an application and then existing members actually vote in all the new members and that works for everything so if a new alliance shows up and they're like hey you know we are ethereum world and we are an alliance and we want to contribute x y and z and we want to be an alliance member they'll put up a proposal and then the current membership actually votes on them um, how do we do governance? You can come here and actually see it. It's not set up, but we're going to choose the vote quorum, which is how many members actually have to vote, the vote alignment, what percent needs to be in support of it. So if we want a consensus organization where everyone has to be in full support, then we put both of these at 100. If we want, you know, classical democracy, majority rules type thing, then we'll put, you know, vote alignment down at 51% or 50% and the quorum at however much participation we think is mandatory or necessary you know, and anywhere in between. And this is what then determines whether a proposal is successful or not. So we'll actually go through the process of setting all of this up, but that's the formalized, you know, version of how this is gonna run going forward. Looking at season two, this is also how we're gonna pick the projects. Is members here are actually gonna vote on proposals for projects that are coming up. So we're not gonna use that big rock tool, which, you know, is kind of buggy, a little bit weird. Um, yeah, there's a lot more to unplug into this, but that's when we get into actually setting up all of the organizations. We'll get more into this in detail. Um, any questions on this before we go forward? I actually have a question on, on specifically this. Um, the, and also Will mentioned it in the chat, the, the become a member button is broken. Um, so that would be my first question is, is that going to be fixed? And then we can just become members of the Regen Civics. And then next, I would ask, how do we actually create our own DAO for our projects? Is that something you're going to walk us through on this call? Or is that going to be a later call? 
that was step two. So what I was going to ask here momentarily, if hands weren't going up, is if we wanted to move into step two for the remainder of this call, um, which is actually going over setting up these organizations, um, which sounds like there might be a lot of support for that, but let me finish hands. Um, otherwise, that is next call where we start getting into that. Okay. And then the become a member button, since that's not working, um, do you know what's going on with that? Um, I wasn't Kevin, aware that it's Kevin, not working, you, but I can report have that. Have you used the Seeds oh. wallet or the Anchor wallet? You need to use the Anchor wallet. The Seeds wallet is not ready for that. Oh, interesting. Okay. Mm. But they are making the, all of this is kind of at the cutting edge. The Seeds wallet should be working for it either it already is or very soon. I know they're working on that right now. But yeah, you could use the Anchor one. And I could show you how to do that. But ideally, we're using the Seeds one and that's working soon if it's not already working. Um, that's weird that it's not working. That's unfortunate because I tested it before sharing it with you all and it worked for me. So whatever happened, then they must have made an update and broke it. It works It works for um, for logging in into the DAO tool, but it doesn't work for any transaction you want to do in the DAO. So becoming a member is a transaction and that was not working. That was last week. I don't know if you have updates on that. Regardless, I'll show you all how to use the Anchor Wallet so that it works regardless of which way you're signing it. Um, Cool. Any other questions about the general overview of, you know, what to expect with this incubator? Anything else you want to add to this incubator? Any way that we might want to approach this? Anything, generally speaking, about how this is being run and what to expect? <clears throat> Anders, I love it. Super active. Uh, honestly, I'm kind of scared about setting up a DAO, and and I'm like I'm like I have fear around like doing something that is going to cause me to like, you know, do something that's, uh, that I can't go back on. So, um, so I just feel like a need to like, take it like slow. And I'm, I'm like really, really grateful for all of you and for other people that have gone deeper into this like already. And, um, and so as some of us are further along in this process, I'm like, I'm tracking, you know, I think everybody's tracking, you know, what other people have done and just like scared of not of making a mistake. Right um and something that i can't i can't go back on so uh yeah i just want to express my gratitude to those of you that have started to walk this you know path already and i think that together you know we're going to do this in a really beautiful way um and so not a direct question but just kind of like where i'm at um yeah that's uh i wouldn't call the tool that we're using a DAO. that's why we use do there's different anyway my, my quick answer to you is nothing is not changeable. Everything is repairable. So there's no mistake that you can make that you can't fix. <laughs> it's just, everything is gonna be noticeable and on chain. So if you do make mistakes, people can go and look and say, hey, he made a mistake there, but then he fixed it here. So okay. the immutable bit is it is all on chain. You can't fix things without people, you know, being able to see that you fixed it. But I would say, don't stress about making a mistake because you can fix any mistake that's made. Um, you just might need consent of members in order to fix a mistake, right? Cool. So the only time it gets really scary is once you have a large organization where consent and passing proposals gets, you know, harder and harder. I mean, there's more discussion and things that need to happen in order to change things. But when you first mm -hmm. set up an organization and there's only five of you required, you know, pass a vote, it's really easy to repair your mistakes and experiment and make it happen. So cool. to alleviate those fears, I'd say, don't worry about it. And we're going to go through it together and have a lot of fun. Cool. Thanks. Um, Walter and then Michael. Okay, I'm, I'm going to have to ask some really basic questions. So, the, does each project sign up in the Regen uh, Civics thing, or is that just for people who want to be uh, designing it, programming and stuff? Oh, you're saying does each project, as in the 13 that were selected, sign up to be yeah. part of the Regen Civics organization? That you were just talking about, yeah. I would say yes, because that's how you're going to, as an organization, earn tokens and how the... So part of the alliance is that we're pooling all the tokens together to create an index. So Regen Civics itself will own tokens of all the projects that have been incubated through that organization. 
All right. And then when Regen Civics get investment into it, then it can invest in those projects. And then what those projects are giving back to Regen Civics is tokens. So you don't have to join the Regen Civics Alliance as a project. It's just you won't be eligible for those types of benefits if you're not. Um, so no, you don't have to join the Regen Civics Alliance as a project if you don't want to. But if you do, there, you know, there's the token swapping that's going on, and there's the opportunity for Regen Civics to invest into you. Um, there's the, you being included in the index. So when people are coming and they're like, hey, I don't want to invest into any particular project, but I love this concept. I want to support the whole thing. That's when they invest into Regen Civics. And then that's where Regen Civics gets a pool of money to invest into projects. So if you want to participate in that whole, you know, kind of economic system we're creating here, then you would want to join the, the Regen Civics organization. If you don't want to participate, then that's great too. You don't have to do that. Does that answer your question? Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Um, Michael. Yeah, this sort of uh, piggybacks on Walter's question, and it also echoes Roberto's question in the chat, which is, <clears throat> if a project or alliance wants to join the Regen Civics DAO, is, is, it, is, there, like, is it just one representative of the project or alliance that would join the DAO or like all members of the project or the alliance or it does it matter in some way or the other? Right now we're just having people. Um, we don't have the capacity though we want to, to have organizations itself be a member in another organization. That's another feature we'll build later. It doesn't exist yet. So right now we're doing the representative. So that's why we're saying that's a role is if you're representing a project and then you as a representative, you're gonna be holding those tokens at least momentarily. And it's up to you and good faith to your <laughs> project and community to send those tokens to the project to help. So we are using intermediaries in the meantime until we can do it direct. Um, and it might be that you actually are earning those tokens and that's how you as a project want to do it because you know you as an individual is taking the time and you're contributing here, et cetera. So maybe you guys decide that it's more equitable for you as an individual to hold all those tokens and all that benefit. Um, it's up to every project to decide how that goes. But as it stands right now, each project is going to have one representative that they choose to join um, the Region Civics Alliance. So you guys can choose who that is amongst yourselves. And that also gives you as a project one voice represented by that one person. So then that project would speak to that person and have them represent whatever their interests are. Great questions, getting into the details. Um, anything else before we go on? Great. Um, I'm aware of time because if we only have 20 minutes left, I'm weary of diving into the organization bit. And I'd rather start that at the beginning of next session and just make the whole session out of it. So I was gonna propose that we could spend the second half of this call going over setting up a down what that looks like, but I want to start that next session and make the whole session part of it. So we can use the remainder of this session talking about step one or general questions. Step one being that video, um, and then also the collaboration tools and starting to, uh, I guess what Anders, what you were sharing is actually build our list of people who are interested in participating here. Yeah. So I'll pause there in case there's any other questions on step one or what to expect for next week or anything again related to this. I feel like there's so many questions in the chat, so maybe I'll... <laughs> Go look in there quick and see if I can answer any of these things. Um, if you are asking questions in the chat, please just unmute yourself or put your hand up and speak up so that people who are watching the recording can benefit from these questions as well. Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, I will read what I write and sorry by my English, sorry. Um, uh, I said that I'm literally doing a self-organization here in my community, and I uh, share it. Uh, and we have huge events and working groups, but we have no tokens or resources uh, local to make a local-based economy and no tools. And I, I ask if we 
can you use the DHO to not being one of the 30 projects, you know, because I, I guess I missed this description. Mis yeah, absolutely. Um, infinite number of projects can create their own DAO and follow along. So that's why we're recording these sessions is for other projects to be able to follow along, even if they're not part of the 13. Really, the main benefits of being part of that 13 is you're sharing your model in these calls and you're considered part of that index fund of projects and you're part of region civics and those other benefits I was talking about. Um, otherwise, any project can follow along, build these same tools, etc. cetera. Um, they're also not gonna be showcased when we're doing that crowd pooling together. So when we crowd pool, we're gonna show those 13 projects. Why that is, is because we're also having a standard of what we're putting out there, is we're vetting the projects, we're making sure they're of you know, a certain quality, that they've already done the work of the setting up the legal and et cetera, et cetera. So that we're vetting the projects and making sure they're in the right capacities. So that's one of the reasons why we're not saying any project can participate in that shared crowd pooling. Um, however, going forward, the only you know, barrier to joining Region Civics as a project is just putting up a proposal and getting voted in by the organization. And then you can join the index token as well. So we're starting off with those 13 projects being part of that quote index where people can invest into all 13, but that will be growing. And the only limitation to that is projects proposing and saying, hey, you know, we meet the certain criteria, we'd love to be included in this index, and then that number can grow. So ideally is that we're gonna you know, set up an index that represents hundreds of thousands. You know, if we are really successful, let's be realistic and say hundreds you know, in the next few years um, of projects that you know, institutions or whatever can invest into. Um, does that answer your question? Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. I, I will be more uh, in this course also to learn. Thank you. Yep, absolutely. And again, anyone watching along and following the season, that's literally what this is for is yes, we're picking 13, but again, any organization and group can follow along, benefit from these discussions and you know, create their structures as well. Um, Anders. <clears throat> so I, I heard that you said, you know, we have 13 projects involved and we're gonna wait for nine projects to complete the system, um, uh, complete the process. Um, life happens, right? As, which is why you chose nine. But, if we're only four and like we're waiting for else, you know, like that might be like potentially detrimental to like the forward moving of the rest. So A, I wanted to um, kind of find some level of consensus because uh, it's easier to say these things right now than like wait long a long time. So creating some type of timeline and maybe making it less than nine if people want that. And then the other thing is that if there are other organizations that are actually following along here and they are taking all of these different steps, if we are less than a certain number, then I think that it could be advantageous to potentially allow other projects to come in if they have been showing up. And if those 13 projects, for whatever reason or less, have not actually gone through all the steps and are ready to launch because our purpose is to launch with 13 projects. Um, I don't know if our purpose is to launch with 13 projects. But, yeah, I'm, but, I'm, I'm, you know, yeah. Um, the goal. My immediate proposal to that, and you can share what you think, is to not over-engineer it. So we're doing the three steps where we go through, we explain the step, we showcase, we showcase again, we try to move on. Um, if we get stuck in a loop, I say bring this back up again if it happens. Um, if we only have four projects that completed it, that's a different signal. That's a signal that we failed at doing that step and we probably need to spend more time on it um, or we've lost people or something else is happening. I don't think that's a signal that we just keep moving forward if only four. So that's why I picked a super majority of nine out of 13 because that could still be, hey, we're doing fine, but life's happening for those four other projects. My other suggestion is if we get to that crowd pooling event and we have had a lot of attrition, then maybe we can invite other projects. So that's another hurdle that we can approach when we get there. And I love that actually, and we can maybe even put that into this right now, is if we get to the crowd pulling event and some have dropped out and we don't have 13, we might be able to invite a few other projects if they followed along and they've needed all the criteria to join and make that a full 13 that we're actually showcasing. Um, the only problem I would see with that is those 13 that hit crowd pulling are gonna be different than the 13 that are part of those, the videos that we're putting out there. And that's an incongruency, I'm, I'm not sure how we would balance. So. 
with this question and there are a million more like it, I'd say let's address them if and when they arrive. And that's how we're gonna build our structure and keep evolving it over time is we'll design a policy when that policy is necessary, but not before, otherwise we can spend a lot of time. <laughs> yeah. um, are you happy with that? Does that meet your needs? Yep. Sure. Great, um, cool. So we have 15 minutes left. What I would love to do just for my own benefit is actually just go around and give everyone a moment to check out and add anything else they would like to add. So again, if there's anything you would like to add or change to this process, because starting next week, we're just gonna be going through it um, and try it out for this season. So if there's anything else you'd like to add, change, amend, whatever, please bring it up now. If there's any thoughts that you wanna share or anything about your project, or you just wanna say something nice, feel free to do that. Um, but we can just go around in a circle and everyone can have a moment to speak to it. Um, so yeah, I'll pass it and then feel free to pass it off. If you have nothing to share, um, just say, hey, thanks, and pass it to somebody else. Um, so to kick this off, I will send it over to Susan. You are muted. It's so uh, creative, and it's so uh, non-judgmental and loosey-goosey, and uh, it's probably like my, my impression of each person here. How much fun can we have? Let's just go for it. Uh, I can't believe that you've done this in the first place. I'm all, all ready, rubbing my hands in glee. Um, how much fun can we have? And I pass it to Walter because I'm married to him. Um, yeah, I, I also feel really excited about this because I think it's, you know, a, a fantastic thing to go go into the future with what we're creating here so i like the loosey-goosey is that the right one <laughs> part <laughs> uh, I, I would also like to say uh reiki I, I love the way you're leading this so uh, enjoy it thanks oh anders uh, I'm, I don't have anything else to say, but I'm just like really grateful and excited about this process. Um, I am grateful for all of you. I'll pass it to Deb. Hi, everyone. I'm glad, um, Rocky, you're leaving this open. I'm, I'm here to listen and learn. Um, I've connected with uh, Lauren, Walter, Susan, and the Finca Sagrada team, and uh, got really curious about how all of this is coming uh, coming together um, and I've been working uh, with uh, Jamaica and the open impact system as well so um, and have connected with a few of you here anyway just uh, appreciate being able to uh, pop in and start uh, learning all that that's happening it's it's uh, it's inspiring and it's amazing to be aware of how many uh, how many things are, are coming together to help us uh, engage and do things in a new way. Um, Nadim. Oh, thank you so much, Deb. Thank you. I'm very, very looking forward. And thank you, dear Brother Reiki, for everything you're doing here. And the whole facilitation team and coordination team, you honor me and I'm honored to be part of this. Thank you so much. And yeah, I love um, coordination and order kind of collaboration in an organized way. Um, that's may might be the German side of me, but basically let's have some collaboration tool, please. And I know about the open um, coalition tool. It's beautiful, beautiful, but it's not ready yet. And let's use what we have, but at least let's use something. So <laughs> thank you so much. I pass to, to Neil. Thanks, Nadim. I'll get on camera here. Um, well, I just want to say that I think doing is the bet by far the most, I mean, regenerative is about doing and constantly doing and renewing. And so just the fact that we're doing this, I think is by far the most important thing we can do. And, you know, whether it ends up 13 or 15 or 12 or nine, I mean, to me, it doesn't matter. As long as all we're working towards this regenerative goal and amazing things are going to come off of it. Branches are going to happen. Other things are going to emerge. 
just not try to force anything, but allow things to happen and allow the adjacent possible and emergence to happen. So uh, this is all perfect. And pass it on to Letty. Yes, I love that idea that letting the emergence just come across ourselves and doing this exploration of work. And I just want to put this note forward that we really try to do these things from the end and from the beginning as well, and trying to weave all the steps, seeing ourselves like complete in the process. But we really need like this kind of region living structures from the beginning. And yeah, just to say under region living, we will be doing this kind of support uh, tokenomics and financial advice. That's my point. And I will pass it to Roberto. Thank you. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed both the questions and the, and the answer and the openness of the approach. Uh, I really like the program. I would say it's, it's very meaty. There is a lot of things there. And uh, I hope we can achieve, I think for six months, I think I would maybe schedule six months for each one of it. <laughs> but uh, I think that, uh, yeah, if this we're in together, maybe we can go that fast. So i um, really looking forward to the process. I'll pass it to Charlie. Thanks. Uh, I had a similar thought about the pace of acceleration in this program. Uh, that we're going to have to go through. I'm curious to get stuck into it. And thank you a lot for hosting the space uh, today. I've got a lot more clarity um, through this session. And thanks for the questions from others as well. I'll pass to Hezu. Hello, everyone. Very happy to be here and grateful to, to come stay and learning the beginnings of the Alliance and hopefully participate in the next system. So learning from the beginning. Um, I don't know how to pass because I don't see Sydney. I can pass it to I'll Lucian. Talk. Okay, hey guys. So well, <laughs> I got you. delighted to uh, delighted to hear all this progress. I'm sorry I wasn't uh, there for the last meeting, um, but I took 500 people through the Get Up game in the last uh, in the last week, which has been very exciting and met with. Um, met with 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 a lot of uh, a lot of magic. Um, so yeah, only thing I would contribute is uh, I'm very happy to invite the the final thirteen or however many we end up on um, to participate um, as part of the United Planet Academy in in the games, and that we can tell the story and film the stories um, from the future about each of these projects. So I, I think that's going to be a very very um, you know, a, a great way of storytelling the impact of, of, of this accelerator. And I'm super excited to offer that and um, bring people into a visa that can make it. Um, and, uh, and then at some point, I think we can do a um, up game on tour around the different sites and film, you know, maybe film an episode um, looking at going in to tell the story of the future in each, in each location. So that's another point that we can explore. So well done, Reiki, as always. You're the, you're the most productive new dad I've, I've, you know, in terms of, I don't know how you juggle it all, but well done. Yeah, I think, uh, baby, he is here to do this and build this world. And he kind of just inspired me to do it. I'm like, I'm going to take time off. What does time off mean when you're serving your passion? It's weird. Exactly. Um, so I imagined I would be sitting there just meditating with them. But when I tried that, all I got was all the inspiration to come build with you all. So I think baby was like, <laughs> Hey, like, I want to be in a region village down. I'm like, all right, I got you. Yeah. Um, one more thing. Cause you had talked about vision and coordination tools. I just want to share this real quick. Cause I forgot. Um, in region civics discord here, this is where we can keep collaborating. I think the notion space is great for some of the more uh, concrete elements of our collaboration, but for really fluid stuff, ongoing work throughout the week, we're going to create new channels for each one of the steps. So the first channel we have here under the season one flow streams, you guys see it here is the scenes from 2030. So I've just been putting this together a little bit, throwing some ideas in here. Um, but I recommend all the projects to do the same and using the same type of content, uh, a way of telling the story. So when we're speaking to our project, let's do it from a first person perspective or sharing the perspective of someone who's living in that project. 
So instead of saying, you know, we have 10,000 acres and we plan to grow our own food and we're going to have a running trail or whatever through the thing, or instead of saying that you instead say, you know, Bob wakes up in the morning and he goes through a run through his thousand person or a thousand hectare village and he picks fruit along the way because they have plants and fish, whatever. So you paint the picture. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to go fast. But anyway, you paint the picture of the of the vision and the future that we're wanting to be in. So that way, when people watch that hour long video of the 13 projects, they're being immersed into a future vision or a current vision of what the world could look like. So rather than doing it anyway, you guys get it. It's the it's a narrative way of explaining what we're creating here. So that's kind of the frame that I'm inviting us to take when we create those videos. And this is just a lot of you know inspiration and ideas that could be kind of out there. Um, and we can get into this. A uh, I was planning. Uh, we've, we've lost a lot of people, so a boat's not going to be perfect right now. However, real quick question. Do we want to spend next session talking about step zero, the start with heart and still talking about the vision? Or would we rather next session go right into the Dow toolings and start with step one and that we're already competent with the vision and what we're going to do? So if you want to spend another session talking about the vision and still on that step zero, put up a heart. If you would rather move on to the organization structure and get right into that, put up a thumbs up. Let me just gauge where everyone's at and then we can normalize it. Cool. I'm seeing a lot of thumbs up um, from project representatives. So we'll do that. If you want to stay with the vision, um, the Discord space is where it's at. We can keep talking in this particular channel, keep ideating and keep going from there. And then starting next week, we'll go on with the organizations. Uh, okay, so that was a, a side note that should have happened at the beginning. Back to Lucian, because I feel like I cut you off unless you had nothing else to say. No, I, I, I think um, I think this just building on what you just said there, Reiki, I think the the notion here that we've seen now with about 2000 people that we've brought into articulating their future vision is it can be a real kind of pattern interrupt in the way we present regenerative solutions because we it goes into a different part of our mind when we speak about something we've done rather than the, the, the like 90 plus percent I'm making that stat up but you know the majority of what we hear about what people are going to do goes in one ear and straight out the other so we're developing this notion, we're calling it the Gaian tradition, but it's basically the oral tradition that comes from speaking the future in the present tense. And the notion is that we actually remember a lot more details when we speak in the present tense, uh, because we, it goes into our like highly evolved storytelling part of our mind and we can remember stories way better. And so there's actually a lot of science behind why we're doing this and um, as well as like a very cool way of presenting projects, you know, from a place where their vision has been uh, reached and, uh, uh, and, and it really helps kind of tell the collective story. So we're, we're making a whole series of films and um, a, a Netflix TV show and like each game creates 16 hours of metaverse content. Um, and so these, future visions could be included in the kind of in the buzz of the essentially the mythologies that we're creating from the future so yeah delighted everybody's jumping on that and uh i'm very excited to bring 2030 visions into the up game and um, check out there's been a lot of updates uh, if you want to check out up.game i'll put it in the chat there's um you know if anybody wants to you know look at coming to a visa and bringing like an early early team into this you'd be you'd be super welcome so uh, I'll, I'll put it in the chat here it's just up dot game and an invitation to write up an announcement and share it in the region civics discord as well sure uh, I'll do, a I'll little do bit that. more about the the intention and design by why we want to present the visions this way yeah um, happy, happy to do that, that. Ooh, also, there's one more element here. I mean, someone spoke to it, we've been speaking to it the last couple of sessions where, you know, when we're successful in this, this is the turning point where our future ancestors are going to look back and be like, hey, I'm living in this village because these people set it up. 
And this is the mythology they put together when setting up this village. This is what we're always going to fall back and rest on. This is why people show up. So if you put a, you know, a mythology and vision out there that this is an egalitarian community, but it's not egalitarian, then there's going to be a conflict, right? And people fall back on the, the mythology that was presented, why people arrived there. So it is really critical, the visions that we're putting together right now, and they could have impact, you know, especially if you're successful, you know, for multiple generations to come. So it is something that I know it seems maybe superfluous or tedious to, you know, put together a vision video, whatever. Um, but it's actually, it's, it's so critical. It's the DNA of the project. It's what's uniting people. It's what's calling people there. And it's what people are going to fall back on whenever there's conflict. Or it's the guiding narrative of how that project is going to continue to evolve. So the more time we put into the DNA from the beginning, the less, you know, trauma and troubles we're going to have to go through going forward. Um, so it's kind of like we're structuring the DNA right now. We're literally designing the DNA of these new organisms and what they could look like. And it's really important to, you know, put, it, put the appropriate amount of time into this. Um, so that's my condensed pitch, since we're not going to be doing it next week, of why, you know, the vision and narrative is so important and why we're focusing on that right now. Um, great. I know there's a few more people who didn't check out. Um, if you would like to check out, please just unmute yourself. because. Um, maybe I'll call on people, actually. Alexandra, if you'd like to go. Oh, no, I'm just a butterfly on the wall today, but i um, grateful for, for all the comments and keep looking forward to next meeting and learning. Thank you. Thank you. And Stephen, I think you're the last one. Oh, thanks. Uh... Sorry, I was driving around. We had a baby chiropractor today appointment, but uh, I tuned in the last 20 minutes uh, and just excited to be here and be part of this group uh, and add anything I can. Uh, quick announcement that we have checking out is um, uh, Wuji Games is uh, releasing its game Earth Defenders this June, and we're looking for other eco villages who'd want to <clears throat> collaborate with us on putting their eco village designs into a game world. Uh, and uh, that's kind of the, the thing I'd like to just uh, check out on and, and just say uh, thanks, Reiki, for putting this together and, and uh, having us here. Ooh, and thanks, Stephen. And that's a great way to close this out because that could be our meta narrative guiding us is about creating templates and pathways. So a big part of what this region civics is about is you know, in some way we're pioneering what humanity has pioneered, you know, millennia ago and will continue to pioneer, but we're pioneering different ways of coming together and building civilization. Um, and it's very complex. It takes a lot of time. And as all of you know, it's a very tedious process. Uh, what we're trying to do though, is throughout this is each season create templates. So as we're going through each one of these steps, we can consider it from that perspective that it is helping other projects and they can look to you, you know, should you succeed and should you inspire them, um, they would look to you on how you've designed your project. So we do want to make it from a point that it is replicable, um, while at the same time having the elements that are very, you know, bioregionally and culturally specific. But we can have a difference between those things. We have the replicable pattern, you know, that gives rise to that specific, you know, feature that we're looking for. And then we have the culturally specific bit, um, which is going to be unique to every single project. So when I say, you know, replicable, we're not looking at having a thousand villages that are exactly the same. When I'm saying replicable, it's the same thing with DNA. DNA is replicable, but every organism from that DNA is unique. So that's kind of what we're looking for is, you know, we're creating those unique projects and villages, but we're trying to find those DNA patterns that are replicable that could help all the other projects, you know, move through this process a little bit quicker, easier and more joyfully. Um, so I, if that's helpful as we consider our next steps, great. Um, so I'll pause it there and, and here for today. So this was exactly an hour and 15. Feel free to unmute yourself and say anything else on your way out. And otherwise, this concludes our first official episode. Hey. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Love you. Very helpful. Peace. Love Thank you so joy. much. Bye, everyone. Bye, y'all. See y'all next week. Mm -hmm.